All right. Well, uh, thank you, and, and um, thank you uh, for the host committee for inviting us uh, to share a little bit about the Progressive Ag uh, Safety Day program. Uh, also want to thank uh, Jana Davidson, uh, my colleague there, our safety, our education content specialist who helped uh, put this uh, PowerPoint and presentation together. Uh, but just to give you a, a little feel of what a Progressive Ag Safety Day is, a lot of people will ask, well, who is the Progressive Ag Foundation or what, what is it all about on, on a Progressive Ag Safety Day program. They hear Progressive Agriculture Foundation, they hear Progressive Agriculture Safety Days, and we're actually a charitable uh, nonprofit foundation, and the foundation funds the Progressive Ag Safety Days. So if you see the different names, uh, we're kind of one umbrella here, but uh, the foundation uh, funds the, the Safety Days, and, and when we look at how we do this or who we are, um, basically uh, built from uh, charitable foundations. We have a, a lot of donations coming in from sponsors, organizations, individuals. In fact, looking around the room here, I think we may want to just pass the hat yet before we leave here today. So, uh, well, that'll send them to the door. <laughs> but we do. We survive. We survive with uh, donations and, and um, some wonderful sponsors. Uh, we're considered uh, the largest uh, rural safety and health uh, organization for youth across North America. The program is expanding across the United States and expanding across Canada, and we group that all as our North American program. And so we do do, do a lot of traveling uh, uh, both across the U.S. and Canada there. As we look down through the numbers, you can see we sponsor around 425 safety days across North America will reach anywhere from 100 to 110,000 kids and volunteers uh, just in this calendar year. And as far as, as doing that, um, people say, well, how can you reach that many people? And it's through volunteers. And yes, we know volunteers are hard to find. We've heard several people make comments of that uh, here the last two days on how it's, it's, it's hard to find volunteers. But that's kind of the way our foundation is built. And if, if you look at our logo, it's kind of the triangle thing. And, and the triangle is built with the, the sponsors on one side of the triangle, our volunteers, another part of the triangle, and the staff as the other part of the triangle. And we just try to build a team. And how that team all works together um, is how the program actually works. Because the thing is, we got the, the North American team the program has also sponsored and expanded down into South America as we are now doing safety days down in Argentina, Uruguay, and this what we call our winter will be their summer and we will also be expanding into Brazil um, this winter which will be their summer. So uh, the South American program is funded on its own. Uh, we, we do not use North American sponsorships or North American dollars to sponsor the South American program. They have their own sponsors uh, down there. But the program is, is expanding internationally more and more. And, and people ask, well, how, how do you do that with a staff of six? Because the foundation, we only have six people uh, employed by the foundation. And Jana and I are both here. So you got a third of the staff you know, right here in the meeting. But we do it with volunteers. And volunteers are hard to find. The secret is, I think, on those volunteers is you got to motivate. You got to motivate people to volunteer. You got to motivate them to want to do that. You want to motivate them to get involved, and that's how we've kind of built the program as far as our trainings. As far as uh, if someone's wanting to get involved, how do you get involved? Um, there's an application, very simple application process. You can go online. I'll, I'll have the website here for you. You also have it in your hands, in your packet. Uh, but you'll make a, a simple application. And you can do it online. You can do it in hard copy. Uh, there are some people that, that love doing it electronically. That's fine. There are some people that are still afraid of the computer. And they want that paper in their hand. And they want to fill that out and send it in. And we can do that also. Um, but there's an application process, and then you attend one of these coordinator trainings. And we're host, we host anywhere from 35 to 40 trainings 
every, every year here across North America. And a lot of people uh, maybe not even aware that, that the trainings are, are in their own backyard until, until you get involved with the program. And um, as far as, as, as people getting involved, there are a lot of different ways people volunteer. There are a lot of ways where we get phone calls and emails every day from people that are looking at the website and they want to get involved. Maybe, maybe they just want their kids to attend a safety day. Maybe they want to volunteer their own time. I want to volunteer. I want to help at a safety day. Um, so there are a lot of different levels. I mean, you don't have to be a, a corporate sponsor to be involved in the program because that's the way we build our volunteer base, you might say. We get people to volunteer at a safety day. Once they, and if anybody here has been at a safety day, which I know they have because looking around the room, we have three or four individuals in the room right now that are safety day coordinators. And a lot of times, the people that come to your safety day and volunteer at your safety day catch the bug catch the bug and then we bring them on board as a, as a safety day coordinator and maybe they're from a neighboring community so the program continues to grow but you've got to motivate you got to motivate the uh, the volunteers to uh, uh, to get them and, and continue and keep them in your uh, in your program as far as uh, what does PAF or the Progressive Ag Foundation provide for your safety day uh, we provide the training and uh, the training uh, involves a planning manual, which is a how-to packet. How do I go from wanting to do this safety day, and what steps do I need to go through to the day of my safety day? That packet is all put together for you. Right? And that's what we go through and we talk about at these trainings. We have that planning packet. We also have the topics, the hands-on activities, the demonstrations, all of those types of things that you might want to choose and select. And, and uh, of the hands-on activities, there might be, I, I think there are hundreds of different activities and demonstrations in that manual. But you get to handpick what you want to do at your safety day. A safety day in Florida may look totally different than a safety day in Louisville, Kentucky, or Winnipeg, Manitoba. Topics are somewhat different. So we do not micromanage the safety days. We teach them, we provide all of this information to them, and we show them how to put their own safety day together. So it's not a, a stressor to them. It's actually something that, that you're bringing in as, as part of that team. Also want to touch on this just from Dr. Field's presentation, uh, where he talked about the quality of teachers. We deal with that also at our safety days, the quality of that instructor, because the instructors will make or break your safety day. If you've got great instructors that really love getting involved with the kids, doing those activities with the kids and the educational thing, you're going to have a great safety day. But if you've got someone there as a presenter, they may have a huge title underneath their name, but if they don't enjoy working with the kids and, and doing hands-on activities, and they just want to give the kids a 20-minute speech, you're probably not going to have a real successful safety day. So that is one of the things that we talk about at, at this training. How do you find that quality person? Because they don't have to have the fa fancy title. Okay? So that's part of the thing, again, to help those volunteers. Take that stress away from the volunteers. And we have found you can find more volunteers if you help get rid of their stress. Uh, and, and that's kind of the team effort of the, of the triangle thing that we've put together. We also provide things for them in the way of t-shirts. And, and you can probably see by some of the pictures, every year we got a different type of t-shirt, a different design and that type of thing. So some of the people that have done safety days for years becomes a collector's you know, selection of them. So uh, we, we provide the t-shirts to all of the kids that attend safety days and all the volunteers get a free t-shirt. They also get a free take-home bag. And the take-home bags are to put in any safety materials, uh, anything that might be gathered for their safety day. And then we also provide the insurance um, that covers that, uh, that particular safety day. 
section that takes care of all of that information and the education content specialist. And you also have a brochure like this that's in your packet there for the fourth uh, session here, and that tells more about it. So with that, I will wrap up, young man.